VIU Online presents GEC 101 English Composition Week 8 Theoretical Lecture Troubleshooting Your Writing. This lecture is presented by Dr. Laura Hills, Professor of English at Virginia International University. You've got to take great care to produce writing that is conventionally correct. Here is a guide to the top 20 mistakes college students make. These top 20 errors are the ones most likely to get you into hot water with your instructors. This is not a value judgment. We have observed that these are the mistakes students most often make and that interfere with readability in their papers. So, are you ready to begin? Let's begin with number one. Error number one, choosing the wrong word. We call these malapropisms. You've chosen a word that may sound like or remind you of the word you intend, but it is not the correct word. We are all guilty of doing this. And you have to read your own work very carefully to catch such errors. Let's look a, look, a little bit now at some examples of malapropisms that we might find in a student's paper. The child suffered from a severe allegory to peanuts when we intended to say, the child suffered from a severe allergy to peanuts. You hear the similarity, allegory, allergy. He was a man of great statue. Instead of, he was a man of great stature. He put neutrons on his salad. Instead of, he put croutons on his salad. Frankly, malapropisms are often very funny, and some comedians use them in their acts. A mirage is an optical conclusion, instead of a mirage is an optical illusion. Their father was a civil serpent. Pretty funny. Their father was a civil servant. The flood damage was so bad that they had to evaporate the city. The flood damage was so bad that they had to evacuate the city. A rolling stone gathers no moths. A rolling stone gathers no moss. He is at the pineapple of his success instead of he is at the pinnacle of his success. He made me a very interesting preposition. Hmm. He made me a very interesting proposition. I ordered a prescription to the magazine versus I ordered a subscription to a magazine. I wish I could alliterate that terrible day from my memory instead of I wish I could obliterate that terrible day from my memory. And finally, this raincoat is persistent to water rather than this raincoat is resistant to water. Now, as you can see, some of these are quite amusing. But it's something that happens in our wiring, I suppose, when we make this kind of error. Review your work very carefully. And the best way, probably, to catch these is to have someone else read your work. They're likely to see what you don't see. Let's look at error number two. Missing comma after an introductory element. Let's take a look at how that might look. In German, nouns are always capitalized. Should be, in German, comma, nouns are always capitalized. Determined to get the job done, we worked all weekend. Should be, determined to get the job done, comma, we worked all weekend. You see what's missing there. In closing, I wish you all the best in your new job. Should be, in closing, comma, I wish you all the best in your new job. For instance, many people don't know whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. For instance, comma, many people don't know whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. 
Nevertheless, it turned out to be a good idea. Nevertheless, comma, it turned out to be a good idea. For now, please don't do anything about it. For now, comma, please don't do anything about it. Secondly, I don't like ice cream. Secondly, comma, I don't like ice cream. When in Rome, do as the Romans do should be when in Rome, comma, do as the Romans do. After you've eaten, why don't you come over? After you've eaten, comma, why don't you come over? In the first place, I've never liked him. In the first place, comma, I've never liked him. And as always, I am your best supporter should be, as always, comma, I am your best supporter. These are introductory elements. Generally, what we can say is that there is a whole sentence that stands to the right of the comma. That is a complete sentence by itself. That should be separated with a comma. Error number three is incomplete or missing documentation. Here's an example. Now this is a quote from one of my articles. According to Hill's comma quote, there are many barriers that interfere with our ability to communicate with and understand one another. Well, what's missing here is where this came from. According to Hills in 2005, and then at the end of the quote, you see it's from page 17, and we are presuming there is an APA reference list at the back with a full citation. It isn't sufficient to just quote someone the first time in a paper. You must say where this person is from, who is this person, and where within the work did you find it. Here's another example. According to one source, James Joyce wrote two of the five best novels of all time. Well, what's the source? So at the end of that, we see it's from the Modern Library 100 Best. And again, there would be a reference list at the back of this work. So you could look up the full reference if you wanted to consult it. Here is error number four, a vague or incorrect pronoun antecedent. Let's take a look at this sentence. If a person wants to succeed, they have to know the rules of the game. This is so commonly spoken today that it's starting to sound very familiar to people, but it is incorrect. Because we have a person and we have they. So they is referring to a person, which is a plural pronoun and a singular subject. It should be if a person wants to succeed, he or she, not they, has to know the rules of the game. Here's another example. Somebody has left their bag on the floor. Again, we say this, we hear it in casual speech, but it is incorrect. What is correct is somebody has left his or her bag on the floor. Somebody is not a there. It's, it's an individual. Every passenger is required to show their ticket should be every passenger is required to show his or her ticket. You see how this works. Every is singular. It would not take the pronoun that's plural. Neither of the boys had done their homework. This gets a little trickier because you might think boys is the subject. However, it is not. It should be neither of the boys had done his homework. Why? Because neither is the same meaning as not one, and neither is the subject of the sentence. Of the boys is a prepositional phrase, right? Boys is the subject of the preposition, the object of the preposition. So we could say if we took out of the boys and substituted not one for neither, it would be not one had done his homework. You see, that is correct. His is the correct pronoun in that case. Whenever you are dealing with neither, remove the prepositional phrase from the equation and look at the sentence. Pretend that neither means not one. Let's look at spelling errors, including homonyms, that we see often in student papers. Sometimes it's a homonym. 
No one came forward to bear witness to the crime. A homonym is a word that sounds exactly the same, but is spelled differently. It should be, no one came forward to bear witness to the crime. You see, same sound, different word. Here's an example of what often happens in student papers. Ronald Reagan won the election in a landslide is great, except President Reagan spelled his name R-E-A-G-A-N. Misspelling a name is very common. The wolves stayed until the pups were grown. For some reason, that word until gets misspelled very often. It's a single L. The wolves stayed until the pups were grown. It was a strong government, another word that is so often misspelled. It is actually government. That's just weird. That's another word, very often misspelled. That's just weird. Uh, the reason it's often misspelled is it breaks the conventional rule of I before E except after C, right? There's no C here, but still it's spelled W-E-I-R-D. So it is an exception to the rule. That's why it is so frequently misspelled. Make sure not to make the strings too loose. It should be loose, a very common mistake we see in papers. Lose is like you lose a game. Loose is how you would tie strings. They're not going to make it. Oh my, how many times we see this mistake. They are. The contraction becomes there, not going to make it. You're welcome. Similarly, is you are welcome, contracted to your welcome. Very common mistake we see. It's just the beginning. It's is tough, a tough word. People make mistakes with it. But when it is, it is the contraction, it gets the, the apostrophe. The possessive does not. I'll definitely be there. Definitely seems to be misspelled. It has finite in there. It's definitely with an I, be there. And we also see this word pairing, affect and affect. It should be, it didn't affect him. And that's a lot of money. Again, we see this very frequently. A lot is not a word. It, that's a lot, two separate words of money. These are very common spelling errors. If you are finding that you are guilty of them, work on it. Make sure you know when you read your paper that you're reading particularly to make sure you don't use the wrong word or misspell. Error number six is a mechanical error with the use of a quotation. And here's a common one. Cain asked, am I my brother's keeper? Question mark, close quote. There's no need for a final period. See, it should be just question mark, close quote. I grew up the victim of confusion, he said. Look where the comma is. It should be inside the quote. See? I grew up the victim of confusion, comma, close quote. The instructor for this course said, I'm doing well. Okay, why are you, why are you first of all quoting him? And he's talking about yourself. So it should be, the instructor for this course said, I'm doing well. There's no need for a quotation there. And Hill's Overcoming Barriers to Communication is a good journal article. Well, that may be true, but the way to say that is Hill's quote, Overcoming Barriers to Communication is a good journal article. The convention in APA style is that the names of books are italicized and the names of articles are not italicized and put in quotes. That's a misuse of APA formatting. Error seven is unnecessary commas. And we see this sometimes, and uh, it's a little baffling, because if you read it the way that the commas would ask you to read them, it doesn't make sense. Many parents of gifted children don't want them to skip a grade. No commas needed. Many parents of gifted children don't want them to skip a, a grade. Simple. There's no need for the commas. She gave the oatmeal cookies to Joe and Sally. She gave the cookies, the oatmeal cookies, to Joe and Sally. There's no reason to put that comma. Think about pausing there. Why would you do that? There's no need. The purpose of the course is to improve writing. Needs no commas. The purpose of the course is to improve writing. The reason for my behavior is obvious. Again, 
The reason for my behavior is obvious, no need for commas. We see students seem to get comma happy. The conclusion applies to Thailand and to the rest of the world, or this conclusion applies to Thailand and to the rest of the world. It's not necessary. This conclusion applies to Thailand and to the rest of the world. I feel sick and tired. Should be, I feel sick and tired. Stop and smell the roses. Stop and smell the roses. We see more errors of unnecessary commas than missing ones. At least that's been my experience with student papers. So when, when you look at your sentences, ask, what are these commas doing there? Do I need them? And if not, don't put them there. Error number eight, unnecessary or missing capitalization. This is very challenging for students who come from another language that uses capitalization conventions differently than in English. Here's a good example. Some traditional Chinese medicines contain, containing ephedera remain illegal, remain legal. Pardon me. Well, the correct way to do it in English is we only capitalize one word, and that's Chinese. There's no reason to, to capitalize traditional medicines or even the name of the drug ephedra. Her mother and father were happy. Her mother and father were happy. Now, we would capitalize mother and father if they were proper names. You call the person, mother, may I have a cookie? But not when we're referring to them as a mother and a father. They're not capitalized in English. Let's go south for the winter. Should be, let's go south for the winter. No capitalization of directions or of seasons in English. Number nine is a missing word, and this happens when you're editing sometimes. Here's a good example. The site foreman discriminated women and promoted men with less experience. It's missing the word against. It should be the site foreman discriminated against women and promoted men with less experience. Or in many cases, we, we, use, we leave out a word that we had there originally. So proofread carefully for omitted words and be particularly careful not to omit words from quotations because you're copying them or when you edit your own work. When you've edited your own work, that's when this is most likely to happen. You changed something else and in changing that, you left out something. So when you edit your work, read it word for word very carefully to make sure it is exactly right. And same with quotations. Make sure you're not omitting. The I fills in words for us sometimes that aren't there. We intend them, but they have to end up in your paper. Error 10 is faulty sentence structure. Uh, people who use marijuana can build a tolerance for it will want a stronger drug. Something's really wrong there, right? It should be people who use marijuana can build a tolerance for it and want a stronger drug. We're missing that conjunction. And also, be sure to use parallel structure. What do we mean by this? Well, here's a sentence that does not have parallel structure. Ashley likes skiing, that's uh, right, to swim and biking. Should be, Ashley likes to ski, swim, and bike. Or, she likes skiing, swimming, and biking. Pick one and stick with it. Is it a gerund? Is it an infinitive? Whatever it is, use it for all three. Don't switch back and forth. Error 11 is missing a comma with a non-restrictive element. That sounds maybe a little intimidating, but it's very simple. Marina, who was the president of the club, was first to speak, should be Marina, comma, who was president of the club, comma, was first to speak. If you can take that whole who was the first, who was the president of the club out, it should be offset with commas because we could have just a simpler sentence. So use commas to set up non-restrictive parts of a sentence. And a non-restrictive element is one that is not essential to the basic meaning of the sentence. So in our example, if it were removed, the sentence would still make sense. 
Marina was the first to speak. If we can do that, then we know that all of the material we put in, who was the president of the club, that is a non-restrictive element that needs to be offset with commas. Error 12, unnecessary shifts in verb tense. I also find these occur when we have students edit their own work. They lose their sense of what tense they were writing in. Abraham was watching the great blue heron. Then he slips and falls into the swamp. Abraham was watching the great blue heron. Then he slipped and fell into the swamp. You see the difference? He was watching. We're, we're in the past there. And now, when we in the first example, he slips and falls as the present. So if he did this before in the past, then everything that he did in the past has to remain so. Verbs that shift from one tense to another with no clear reason can confuse readers. Well, that's, that's saying a lot right there. It is certainly confusing about when things happened in time. Error 14 is unnecessary or missing apostrophes. It was the dog's bone. Well, it's the possessive. It was the dog's bone. The jacket was hers. Now this is confusing, right? We don't use the apostrophe when we, when we have hers. A little fun thing about English. Babe Ruth was one of the Yankees' best hitters. Makes sense, except the name of the team is plural. Yankees. Babe Ruth was on one of the Yankees' best hitters. It's a shame should be, it is a shame, contracted. Error 15 is fused or run-on sentences. The current was swift, he couldn't swim to shore, should be two sentences. The current was swift, that's a complete sentence. He couldn't swim to shore, another complete sentence. Klee's paintings seem simple. They are very sophisticated, same thing. But in this case, we're not doing them as two sentences, but we're using a conjunction. Klee's paintings seem simple, but they are very sophisticated. She doubted the value of meditation. She decided to try it once. Well, you now have a different structure. Although she doubted the value of meditation, she decided to try it once. Error 16 we call a comma splice. I was strongly drawn to her. She was lovely. This is a lot like the run-on sentence, except there's a comma where there should not be one. It is still two complete sentences, but separated by a comma. I was strongly drawn to her, for she was lovely. We hated the meatloaf. The cafeteria made it every Friday. We hated the meatloaf that the cafeteria made every Friday. You see the commas inappropriate there. And GEC 101 is a wonderful course. I will miss it. GEC 101 is a wonderful course, period, complete sentence. I will miss it, period, another complete sentence. So putting a comma between those two elements is incorrect. Error number 17 is lack of pronoun antecedent agreement. That means that the, the noun and the pronoun don't match. Either Sandy or Ellen will give their speech. Should be either Sandy or Ellen will give her speech, as in our example earlier of neither. Either works the same way. Every student must provide their own uniform. Every student must provide his or her own uniform. The baby wanted its bottle. We see that, but is a baby an it? No, a baby we're saying here is a baby human. So this is a human being and should be referred to as his or her. The baby wanted his bottle. Error 18 is a poorly integrated quotation. So we'll see this in a student paper. All of a sudden there's this quote, dumpster diving has serious drawbacks, page 383. It's in no way connected to the paper. It's just dumped in there. So we need some way to introduce it, to set it up. So here's how we can do it. According to Smith in 2013, dumpster diving has serious drawbacks. That's from page 383. You see, now it flows as a sentence that belongs in the paper. 
Quotations should fit smoothly into the surrounding sentence structure. They should be linked clearly to the writing around them, rather than dropped abruptly into the writing. So you can say things like, as Smith suggests, and then have a quote, or according to Smith, and then have a quote. Smith suggests that, and then a quote, or as Smith says, and then a quote. You see how it's much better, much better flow in the paper. Error 19, unnecessary or missing hyphens. Okay, this paper looks at fictional and real life examples. We will see this all the time, but this is how it should be. This paper looks at fictional and real life examples. You know how I know that it needs it? There's a little test you can do. You take the noun, examples, and then you look at the adjective right before it and you say, could those appear separately? Are they life examples? Are they real examples? Or are they real life examples? Well, in order to preserve meaning, meaning they have to appear together. Therefore, they would be hyphenated. The buyers want to fix up the house. Okay, we do not hyphenate verbs. The buyers wanted to fix up the house. That is actually a phrasal verb, fix up. A compound adjective that appears before a noun needs a hyphen. But don't hyphenate two word verbs, as in phrasal verbs, fix up, sit down, come over. Those don't get hyphenated. Example number 20 is sentence fragments. The old aluminum boat sitting on its trailer. Lovely image, but it's not a sentence. The old aluminum boat was sitting on its trailer. We needed a verb. A fragment may lack a subject, a complete verb, or both. Reading your draft out loud Backwards, sentence by sentence, will help you spot fragments easily. In fact, if you have found in your writing that any one of these 20 common mistakes is something that you fall into, reading your paper out loud and backwards sentence by sentence will help you catch them. When you hear it spoken very often, you will hear that something was missing. This concludes the theoretical lecture for week 8.